So let's take a look at this assignment. This is based upon uh, AMCAT 2409VARC. So we will do first two passages from this. So let's take a look at the first one. Turtles may never take top place among the animal kingdom's most prolific vocalizers. But it turns out they do indeed have something to say. In a new study published in Nature Communications, researchers found that turtles, along with other understudied animals, do in fact communicate using a diverse repertoire of vocal sounds. The study's authors suggest that their finding may push the origins of acoustic communication back in time to the common ancestor of all lung vertebrates. So this is a new uh, kind of a discovery that is happening. Uh, turtles were never considered to be uh, having any kind of communication uh, or vocalizing. But now there's a new study that is published in Nature Communication that shows that Along with some other understudied animals, turtles also communicate using some vocal sounds. And therefore, this finding may push the origin of acoustic communication back. Earlier, it was thought that acoustic, acoustic communication in animals evolved much later. But this will push it back to common ancestors of all lunged vertebrates. So vertebrates, jitne bhi hote hai, jinki spine, hoti hai, vertebral column, hota hai, un sabke common ancestors tak ye push ho jayega. Because Earlier, it was believed that maybe acoustic communication started with uh, some of the animals down the line from common ancestors. But now, it seems that the common ancestor was the lung vertebrate. He also communicated with them. And all the lungs of the lung vertebrate communicated with them. Prior to the current study, many of the included species were considered to be mute. Gabriel, a doctoral candidate at this university, tells us. Scientific American. By carefully listening to recordings from 53 species, the team reached a different conclusion that vocalization is more widespread than previously thought, and that the sounds the turtles are making have the same evolutionary origin as our own vocal communication. Cohen says. So now this study, it had 53 species that were considered to be mute. Now, uh, after having listened to these recordings, they reached a different conclusion. Different means earlier they thought that these were mute, but now they say that vocalization is more widespread than previously thought. And then and then the sounds they are making have the same evolutionary origin. So first two paragraphs, the nutshell, earlier turtles were supposed to not be having ability to make vocal sounds and communicate, but the recent study uh, on animals that were considered to be mute has shown that <clears throat> turtles also uh, do vocalize and the sounds that they make may have the same evolutionary origin as our own vocal communication. That means common lunged vertebrate jutha, our ancestor. See, there was a common ancestor for all lunged vertebrates. We are also lunged vertebrates. So, pehle to ye socha jata tha ki, uh, turtles jo hai, wo ye socha jata tha ki jo communication hai, wo thoda Baad mein aaya. Lekin now we can trace it back to a common ancestor. That means, this time Hamari start with vocal communication, usi time turtle ki bhi start with The paper's findings add fresh fuel to debates around the abilities of some, some animals to communicate with one another. In 2022, scientists published a paper in Nature Communication which mapped the evolutionary phylogenies of roughly 1800 vocal and non vocal species and postulated that acoustic communication had evolved independently in Earth's major lineages, including frogs, birds, and mammals in association with nocturnal lifestyles. In that analysis, turtles were lumped into the non-vocal group. So earlier it was uh, thought that uh, uh, these acoustic communication, they evolved in Earth's major lineages. These are different lineages, different lines of evolution, frogs, birds, mammals. So here acoustic communication may independently evolve. Work. Frog may kisi time pe hua, birds may kisi time pe hua, mammals may kisi or time pe hua, in association with nocturnal lifestyles. So they mapped the evolutionary phylogenies. Phylogeny basically is the study of evolutionary history, evolutionary history of these species. So they had 1800 vocal and non vocal species, and they said that these acoustic communication in may independently develop. Hua. In that analysis, turtles were lumped into non vocal group. Turtles of course non vocal. Mein so this Cohen began to probe for sound in previously understudied studies by studying his own pet turtles. I decided to record them just to check it out. He tells new scientists. I found several 
साउंड्स देयर एंड देन वी केप जस्ट केप गोइंग विथ मोर स्पीशीज सो इसको काफी साउंड मिली वहां पे और ही सेड ही केप गोइंग सडनली आई हैड गुड सैंपलिंग आई कुड अंडरस्टैंड अ बिगर पिक्चर और फिर ये इसको काफी कुछ ज्ञान मिल गया फ्रॉम देयर द टीम करेक्टेड साउंड फ्रॉम एन एडिशनल 50 टर्टल स्पीशीज एज वेल एज लंग फिश ट्यूटारा सिसिडियंस to better identify which scenarios might elicit sound he traveled to five countries to record each species for at least 24 hours and did so in various settings including when the animals were alone or in the same or mixed sex groups and even when they were underwater every species of group studied produced at least one sound and in many cases these recordings for the first time such sounds had ever been heard so ye ab bahut alag alag type ke 50 turtle species ki sound correct karne ke liye nikal gaye lung fish tutara wagera ke bhi and uh, ये आइडेंटिफाई करना चाहते थे विच सिनेरियोज माइट एलिसिट साउंड किस सिनेरियोज में साउंड निकलती है क्योंकि हो सकता है कि सारी सिनेरियोज में साउंड ना निकलती हो मेनी टाइम्स टर्टल्स और दीज अदर स्पीशीज मे नॉट बी एलिसिटिंग और मे नॉट बी वोकलाइजिंग बिकॉज ऑफ सर्टन सेटिंग्स तो इसने कहा कि मैं अलग अलग कंट्रीज में जाके देखूंगा कि हो सकता है किसी और सेटिंग में साउंड एलिसिट होती है तो अलग अलग जगह जाके उस जाके उसने देखा कि जब अकेले हैं मिक्स्ड सेम सेक्स में है मिक्स्ड सेक्स में इवन अंडर वाटर हैं तो क्या ये साउंड एलिसिट कर रहे हैं एवरी स्पीशीज द ग्रुप स्टडी प्रोड्यूस एट लीस्ट वन साउंड एंड इन मेनी केसेस दिस रिकॉर्डिंग्स आर फर्स्ट टाइम सच साउंड्स हैड बीन हर्ड सो ये एक्सपेरिमेंट में उसने अलग अलग कंट्रीज में जाके चेक किया एंड ही कुड फाइंड रिकॉर्डिंग्स ऑफ सच साउंड व्हिच वाज नॉट हर्ड अर्लियर व्हाइल द स्टडी एडेड टू साइंटिस्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वोकलाइजेशन इन दीस ग्रुप्स also has implication for revolution of auditory communication more broadly when the researchers anal- reanalyzed the earlier phylogenies with their data added in they concluded that rather than evolving multiple times vocalization evolved once in a common ancestor specifically cohen and his colleagues traced vocalization back to the lobe finned fish furry which is considered a possible last common ancestor of all coenate lunged vertebrates that would mean that vocal communication evolved for roughly 407 million years ago At least hundred million years earlier than previously thought. So, अब ये study का एक important impact है कि auditory communication कब evolved? When did they evolve? So, इन्होंने जो ये with this with their their earlier phylogenetic genetics का data था, when they reanalyzed it with their data added in, they concluded that rather than evolving multiple times, vocalization evolved once in a common ancestor. Specifically, they traced vocalization back to the lobe finned fish. which is considered the last common ancestor of all coenate lunged vertebrates so all lunged vertebrate then evolved into different direction to so, ye akeli fish ye jo thi iske baad mein sab alag alag direction mein chale gaye turtles idhar chale gaye birds idhar chale gaye frogs idhar chale gaye mammals idhar chale gaye and obviously in their evolution wherever they were the communication as aisa pehle socha jata tha each lineage mein the communication evolved independently but now they could trace it back to a common ancestor that this in this common ancestor the communication evolved and then it went on so this then took it back almost 100 million years earlier than previously thought so this guy tells new scientists that vocalization may be even older as lungless fish also produce sounds aur bhi ho sakta hai purana ho kyunki ye to lunged vertebrates ko dekh rahe hain there could be lungless fish they may also produce sounds if it could be that one lineage of those fishes was the precursor of the tau type of sound we make us we make as coenates so it could be actually this lineage of sound production is older than what i found so maybe लंगलेस फिश का और पीछे भी हो सकता है तो हियर वी स्टार्टेड ऑफ थिंकिंग दैट टर्टल्स विल नॉट कम्युनिकेट यूजिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ वोकलाइजेशन बट देन दे फाउंड दैट विद द रिकॉर्डिंग्स डन फ्रॉम डिफरेंट स्पीशीज एंड आल्सो फ्रॉम एट डिफरेंट प्लेसेस अराउंड द वर्ल्ड इन डिफरेंट सेटिंग्स दे वर एबल टू फाइंड दैट टर्टल्स ऑल्सो वोकलाइज and therefore uh, they could trace back the evolution of acoustic communication to the common lunged vertebrate ancestor and then this pushed back the evolution of communication to almost 100 million years and in the end they say that ho sakta hai ki lungless fish also maybe have been communicating so even uh, this could go back a few million years let's look at the questions The ideas that best by uh, in the passage are best represented by which of the following sequences: vocal communication, acoustic communication, turtles, coenates, lungless fish. So initially itself, turtle vocalization came in. Turtles 
मेन स्टे ऑफ दिस होल थिंग टर्टल से स्टार्ट हुआ था सो टर्टल वोकलाइजेशन इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट देन वोकल कम्युनिकेशन नॉक्टर्नल लाइफ स्टाइल्स केम मच लेटर नॉक्टर्नल लाइफ स्टाइल्स केम मच लेटर वेन दे सेट दैट मे बी दिस वॉज हैपनिंग सो दिस नॉक्टर्नल लाइफ स्टाइल्स इज मच लेटर so this also looks suspicious total vocalization is okay coenate auditory lungless fish coming fish coming total vocalization animal communication auditory communication lung vertebrates vocalization in lungless fish so this looks like a better sequence total vocalization than animal vocalization they found that uh, animals could be separated into two groups vocal and non vocal they kept turtle in the non vocal group and then they changed it and then they said that okay the auditory communication goes back to lung vertebrates common ancestor and then they said that in lungless fishes it could have been even earlier so this is okay lungless fish communication this is okay coenate auditory communication this also looks okay but nocturnal lifestyles is not the first and turtle vocalization is not the second so this is wrong uh, <clears throat> turtle fear come very late so this is also wrong animal lineages evolutionary is not a turtle hey ni so this is out to see become the correct answer Which of the following best restates the implication in it also has implication for evolution of auditory communication more broadly. It also has implications for. So para six me dekhte hain. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he says while the study add to scientists understanding of vocalization in these groups, it also has implication for the evolution of auditory communication more broadly. when the researchers reanalyzed the earlier phylogenies they concluded that rather than evolving multiple times vocalization evolved in a common ancestor so implication is that vocalization did not evolve in different lineages at different times it had one common ancestor so what are the implications vocalization was traced all the way back to the last common ancestors of all lung vertebrates we can keep this vocal communication evolved with lungless no lungless fish came in the end all lung vertebrates have a common ancestor all lung vertebrates have a common ancestor or we are saying that vocalization goes back to the last common ancestor of lung vertebrates vocalization didn't evolve independently across various lineages so this also uh, is a candidate so if we if we are able to let's say narrow it down to these two then let's look at it very carefully when the scientists when the while the study add to scientists understanding it has also implication for evolution implication for evolution kya hai ki rather than evolving multiple times it evolved with a common ancestor so vocalization was traced all the way back to last common ancestor or vocalization didn't evolve the implications for the evolution is not this implication is that it didn't evolve because implication for the evolution he is not saying that uh what does it point to or what is the conclusion if that was the case then we could have said it was traced all the way back but what he saying he is saying is what is the implication for evolution so we were earlier saying that the the evolution evolved independently across various lineages but now here he is saying that the that rather than evolving multiple times it evolved once in a common ancestor so jaise ye yahan pe kaha tha ki postulate that acoustic communication had evolved independently in earth major lineages this is not so This is not so because ये जो map कर रहे थे evolutionary phylogeny उसमें इन्होंने postulate किया था that they had evolved in, uh, independently. Now when they added this this study is understanding to the vocalization and reanalyzed reanalyzed the earlier phylogeny phylogeny तो इसने कहा कि ये rather than evolving multiple times जैसा यहाँ पे कहा था it evolved only once and therefore D is the right answer and not A. So it was a little tricky question but I hope uh, you got it why D is the right answer. It's a it's a logical question as i say there is nothing uh, illogical about it it's a correct answer the 2020 the paper published in nature of communication was mentioned to show that so 2020 jo published tha paper usko dekhte hain so 2020 ka jo paper tha the paper's finding added fresh fuel to the debates around the abilities to some animals to communicate with one another in 2022 scientists published a paper in nature communication in which map the evolutionary phylogeny of this and postulate the acoustic evolved independently 
uh, in that analysis turtles were lumped into non vocal group so ye jo evolutionary phylogenies thi ye 1800 vocal or non vocal species ki thi so he's saying it was mentioned to show that some animals were considered incapable of producing sounds earlier yes we can say that turtles are incapable of vocal communication See, to galat ho gaya na. turtles are not incapable turtles are capable of vocal communication turtles were thought to have been incapable of vocal communication suppose aisa rakhte ho see uh, yahan pe ye ki, turtles were lumped into non vocal group isme jo ye 2020 ka paper banaya isme isne 1800 vocal or non vocal species ke bare mein likha aur usme usne kaha ki uh, jo inke andar communication evolve hua hai wo independently hua hai aur usme turtle ko usne non vocal mein rakha that means turtles were thought to have been a part of the non vocal group but ultimately as it turned out turtles are also vocal so then how can we say that turtles are incapable of uh, vocal communication so had it been turtles were incapable jaisa isne kaha some animals were incapable वैसे टर्टल्स वर कंसीडर्ड इनकेपेबल अगर ये लिखा होगा देन दिस मे हैव बीन आल्सो करेक्ट सो ये गलत हो गया टर्टल्स आर इनकेपेबल दिस इज रॉन्ग टेंस गलत है इसमें एकोस्टिक कम्युनिकेशन हैड इवॉल्वड इंडिपेंडेंटली ये तो गलत ये तो इट वाज नॉट मेंशनड टू शो दैट इट हैड इवॉल्वड इंडिपेंडेंटली इन अर्थ मेजर लीनिएजेस postulated that acoustic communication had evolved independently in association with uh, with various lifestyles <clears throat> so why was this mentioned now was it mentioned uh, to show that so uh, the c acoustic communication had evolved independently now this was postulated in this study this is not as it how as it has turned out abhi jo research hai abhi jo author ne bataya cohen ne bataya ki acoustic communication had not evolved independently so 2020 paper published is was mentioned to show that acoustic communication had evolved this is a wrong statement because this never happened it had not evolved it was mentioned maybe to show the difference between what was postulated in this paper and the reality if something like that had been discussed then it's fine but wo to keh raha hai ki it was mentioned to show that acoustic communication had evolved independently in earth major lineages this is not a fact right this is not a fact it was mentioned yes had it uh, been that uh, acoustic communication was thought to have evolved independently suppose yahan pe likha hota was thought to have evolved independently then this would have been a correct answer but ye to bol raha hai ki acoustic communication had evolved independently so this is wrong right though yahan pe aap i hope you are able to understand this difference ki ye keh raha hai ki they said that published and they postulated that acoustic had evolved independently that's fine but ultimately when we see when we come here in the end this says that uh, it did not evolve multiple times right vocal communication did not evolve multiple times uh, rather than evolving multiple times it evolved once in a common ancestor so isliye ye third is wrong nocturnal lifestyles influence the vocalization abilities of various limit ye nahi ye batane ke liye nahi hai this is totally wrong so one is the correct answer some animals were considered incapable of producing sounds earlier इस वाले केस में अगर टर्टल्स वर इनकेपेबल बताता तो वी कुड एग्रीड इसमें यहां लिखा था लिखता हैड टू वाज थॉट टू हैव और वाज सपोज्ड टू हैव तो भी ये करेक्ट होता ओके सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड व्हाई दीस टू आर रॉन्ग कोहेन ट्रैवल टू फाइव कंट्रीज टू रिकॉर्ड ईच स्पीशीज बेस्ड ऑन द प्रेजम्पशन दैट द रिकॉर्डेड स्पीशीज नाउ सी व्हाई डिड ही ट्रैवल टू फाइव डिफरेंट कंट्रीज ही डिड सो इन वेरियस सेटिंग्स इंक्लूडिंग व्हेन द एनिमल्स वर अलोन इवन व्हेन दे वर अंडर वाटर तो ही ही earlier he thought that to better identify which scenarios might elicit sound kis scenario mein sound hoga so maybe he thought that uh, animals do not always produce sounds and that's why he traveled to different countries in different settings to elicit those sounds so isliye isme this b looks to be the correct answer so do not always produce the same sounds in the same setting so he didn't travel to based on the presumption that 
this is the this is not the presumption this is the conclusion isn't it this is the result ye isne yahan pe kaha ki jab isne ye study kiya yahan pe jaake by tribe five country did so in various settings including when the animals were alone even when they were under water every species included at least produced at least one sound and in many cases this according to the first type तो ये तो उसकी अलग अलग उसमें साउंड जो निकाली गई तो इसमें डू नॉट ऑलवेज प्रोड्यूस द सेम साउंड इज़ द सेम सेटिंग इज रॉन्ग डू नॉट ऑलवेज प्रोड्यूस साउंड्स यस दिस इज ओके प्रोड्यूस डिफरेंट साउंड्स इन डिफरेंट सेटिंग्स अगेन ये वन एंड थ्री में क्या डिफरेंस इज देर एनी डिफरेंस सपोज वी आर मार्किंग वन देन वाई वुड वी नॉट मार्क थ्री एंड इफ यू आर मार्किंग थ्री वाई वुड वी नॉट मार्क वन आर वन एंड थ्री नॉट द सेम थिंग डू नॉट ऑलवेज प्रोड्यूस द सेम साउंड इज द सेम सेटिंग मीन्स दे प्रोड्यूस डिफरेंट साउंड इन डिफरेंट सेटिंग्स or they produce different sounds in the same setting so this is wrong produce different sounds when alone and in when in groups so who is the right answer that he went to different countries uh, based on the presumption that they don't always produce sounds because if they were already producing sound he would not have had to travel agar already sound produce ho rahi hoti uski country mein so why would he have gone to five different countries he went to five different countries just because he wanted to record those sounds in different settings because he thought that uh, they don't produce sound uh, they not always produce sound maybe some setting is needed for that that's why he went to five different country so i hope this passage and the questions are clear it will be tricky it will be tricky questions were pretty tricky let's take a look at the second one guerrilla warfare occurring between lightly armed partisans and a conventional army is an example of asymmetrical warfare victory in war does not always go to the military superior force indeed colonial powers have contended with asymmetrical threats since the rise of empires in the 6th century bce darius one of persia at the head of the largest and most powerful army in existence at the time was checked by the scythians who possessed a smaller but far mobile force as recounted by herodotus in book 4 of his history the scythians retreated before the main body of persian army drawing it deeper into Scythian territory only to launch lethal mounted strikes on Persian encampments. Encampments. Darius was forced to retire, leaving the Scythians <clears throat> in command of the land beyond the Danube River. So this passage talks about guerrilla warfare. कि एक conventional army होती है, normal usual large army. उसके against में lightly armed, छोटी सी एक party sense में जो local लोग होते हैं. वो लोग लड़ते हैं असिमेट्रिकल असिमेट्रिकल मीन्स बोथ साइड्स आर नॉट सिमेट्रिकल वन साइड इज वेरी तब से ये चल रहा है तो सिक्स सेंचुरी में ये बताया गया था कि डेरियस ऑफ पर्शिया जो था जो वर्ल्ड में जिसकी सबसे लार्जेस्ट और पावरफुल आर्मी थी और स्काइथियंस जो थे Uh, उन्होंने उसको बट उनकी स्मॉलर और मोबाइल फोर्स थी तो स्काइथियंस जो थे वो रिट्रीट uh, कर गए और उसके बाद स्काइथियन टेरिटरी में घुस गए और उसके बाद उन्होंने लीथल माउंटेड स्ट्राइक्स लॉन्च कर दी सो डेरियस वॉज फोर्स टू रिटायर सो ये एग्जांपल दिया है डेरियस और स्कीथियन का बताने के लिए कि सिक्स सेंचुरी बी तक उस जमाने से चला आ रहा है ग्रिल्ला वॉरफेयर इन द मॉडर्न एरा वेस्टर्न पावर्स फाइटिंग इन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज डिफीटेड बाई लोकल फोर्स Despite massive asymmetries in terms of conventional military strength, colonial powers were forced to withdraw from Algeria, Indochina, and other areas, not necessarily as a result of defeat in in the battle, but because of their lack of will to sustain the war. In Vietnam, a crushing defeat at the Battle of Dinh Binh Phu in '54 sapped the will of French military, and after two decades of U.S. involvement, the social and political environment at home forced the U.S. to concede defeat. सो मॉडर्न एरा में भी ये तो अब एग्जाम्पल दिया था उसने बिफोर सिक्स सेंचुरी बी सी ई का उसके बाद मॉडर्न एरा में भी वेस्टर्न पावर्स जब डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज में लड़ती हैं तो दे आर डिफीटेड बाई लोकल फोर्सेज जैसे एग्जाम्पल दिए अल्जीरिया इंडो चाइना फिर वियतनाम में फ्रेंच हेड लॉस्ट एंड देन वी ऑल नो द यू एस इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन वियतनाम वॉर एंड हाउ दे वर फोर्स टू कंसीड डिफीट तो इंसर्जेंट्स इन कॉलोनाइज कंट्रीज ऑफन डिड नॉट डिफीट समटाइम्स लॉन्ग स्टैब्लिश कॉलोनाइजर बट मियरली परसुएडेड इट टू विदड्रॉ तो उनको हराया नहीं लेकिन उनको परसुएड कर दिया विदड्रॉ करने असिमेट्रीज ऑफ बोथ पावर एंड विल वर ऑपरेटिंग विल ओके विल टू फाइट वॉज स्ट्रॉन्ग इन द लोकल फोर्सेज वेर एज द विल टू फाइट वॉज नॉट देयर इन द 
colonial forces. The colonial powers possess military resources, but sometimes reluctant or unable to bring, bring them to bear. So first two paragraphs describe how from uh, the, a long time or from the ancient times, uh, guerrilla warfare or asymmetrical warfare has been going on where small local armies have been able to uh, hold off uh, large conventional armies and make them even withdraw. The value of asymmetrical tactics can be seen most clearly in guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla means little war in Spanish. Guerrilla fighters are generally fewer in number and possess fewer and far, less powerful weapons than opposing force. Guerrilla tactics include ambush, chupke war karna, ambush, avoiding open battle, cutting communication lines, lines generally harassing the army. Guerrilla ka kaam ye nahi hota ki aamne saamne one to one ladke aur unko hara dena. Wo kari nahi sakta because they are very few in number. So they do all these kind of tactics. Ambush, chupke baat jayenge kahin pe ya phir communication lines cut kar denge. Generally harass karenge, tang karenge. Guerrilla warfare has been practiced throughout history and it includes both military operations carried out against the rear of enemy's army and operations carried out by local population against an occupying force. So, you can go back to the back of the war and go to local population. Kar, war kar sakte. Aim of guerrilla fighter is to erode, erode the enemy's will to sus, sustain the cost of continuing the war. Now, these <clears throat> large powers hoti hai, to maintain this army, they have to spend a lot and they have to bear the cost. So, this guerrilla warfare sometimes breaks or erodes the enemy's will to sustain the war. Henry Kissinger observed that the guerrilla wins if he does not lose. The conventional army loses if he does not win. Conventional army has to spend a lot. So if we look at Russia, Ukraine, Russia ki kitne sare soldiers pe lage rahe, the, how much expenditure has been incurred and they don't have anything more to give there. So that's why that is also a kind of defeat. So if the smaller country is not losing, then it is winning. Whereas if the big country is not winning, then it is losing. So Henry Kissinger uh, observed this. Although usually exercising a smaller force, guerrilla fighters, especially in urban areas, can be a formidable adversary. Guerrilla fighters do not inhabit large, well-established bases, making it impossible for the enemy to exploit technological advantages such as aerial bombardment to destroy personal and infrastructure. So these urban areas are very Formidable adversary means coffee uh, uh, challenging adversary hote hai, opponents hote hai, conventional military. Ke. Ye, they don't have big established bases. Therefore, those enemies cannot destroy. Suppose koi ek local army is a base. Hai. Usko to, uh, aerial bombardment kar sakte hai, usko destroy kar sakte hai. If gorillas are in urban area, opponents cannot use powerful conventional weapons. Because in urban area, mein agar wo attack karenge, to local civilians ko bhi casualty karenge. And risk increasing popular support for guerrillas. Small guerrilla or insurgent groups also tend to be less hierarchical, meaning a force cannot be neutralized by uh, capture or death of handful only. Or ye log bahut hi less hierarchical hote hain. So agar ek aad koi main aadmi mar bhi gaya to uh, jada fark nahi pada. So <coughs> this passage talks about asymmetrical warfare in the first two, and then guerrilla warfare specifically. In the last two paragraphs. And in the last paragraph, specifically the guerrilla warfare in urban areas, where because they are small, they don't have big bases which can be attacked, and also because uh, they are less hierarchical, therefore they are able to prevail. All of the following are true according to the passage, except Algeria, Indochina, and Vietnam serve as examples for the effectiveness of a symmetrical warfare. So, yeah, both clearly hai. Example has been given in Algeria, Indo, China, and Vietnam. So this is according to true according to the passage. This is not the answer. Sorry. In the sixth century BCE, the Scythians had to concede defeat. Oh, oh concede defeat? Nahi. They got victorious. Rather, they were able to uh, chase away the Darius. So concede defeat is exactly the opposite. Concede defeat means they were defeated, whereas it is not so. Uh, they launched lethal mounted strike. Darius was forced to retire, leaving the Scythians in command. So this is totally wrong. This is the correct answer. Guerrilla warfare includes covert operations, secretive operations, may benefit from disinclination of conventional army to attack urban areas. Yes. So this was a very easy question. Uh, second was the answer. Purpose of second para of the passage is to show that. Second para mein kya hai? Second para mein examples diye hai. Kis kis ke example diye hai? Western powers in developing countries mein, when they have been defeated. So Algeria, Indochina, Vietnam, all of these things are given. 
There are cases in which conventional military strength has preferred armistice in the face of long drawn asymmetrical wars. So conventional military ne, armistice means they have been forced to withdraw okay, or they have been forced to give up. Armistice means uh, truce or peace or uh, end of war. So they have signaled end of war in the face of long drawn. So ye to kai bataya hai isne. Ye bataya, Canadian force was forced to withdraw, not necessarily as a result of defeat. But because of lack of will to sustain the power. Then same uh, crushing defeat sapped the will of French. Uh, in Vietnam War, social and political environments forced US to concede defeat and withdraw. So uh, these are examples of first one. So this looks okay. The US lost the Vietnam War because of the asymmetrical war launched by local forces. No. Vietnam War may in kya hua tha? Uh, social and political environments at home force the U.S. to concede defeat. So this is not correct. The U.S. and French fought the Vietnam. No, Vietnam War may a different defeat in 1954 mein, aur uske baad mein 20 years later U.S. came with it. So this is wrong. Social and political climate of Vietnam pressured the U.S. No, social and political climate at home of U.S.A. So this is wrong. One is the right answer. So this also was a straightforward question. All of the following are implied by the penultimate para except that conventional armies. So penultimate para mein kya bata hai ki guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare mein fewer hote hain, less weapons hote hain, ambush karte hain, cutting off communication lines karte hain. Isko kafi time se practice kiya ja raha hai. Aim of is to erode the enemy's will. So ye sab bata hai. So isme according to the uh, true according to the passage, except. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. All the following are implied by the penultimate para, except that conventional armies are under pressure to win the wars they are fighting. Yes, this is true. This is given because Henry Kissinger observed guerrilla win, wins if he doesn't lose, the conventional army loses if he doesn't win. And aim of the guerrilla fighter is to erode the enemy's will to sustain the costs. So they are under pressure to win the wars. So this is correct, not the answer. Are constantly wary of mounting costs. Yes, wary means they are cautious about mounting costs. It is also given. Do not prefer wars of attrition that do not give results in reasonable time frames. So they do not prefer wars of attrition that do not give results in reasonable time frames. This also looks okay. This also looks correct. Do not prefer engaging guerrilla fighters because it always includes local populations. So all of the following are implied by the penultimate para, except that conventional armies do not prefer engaging guerrilla fighters because it always includes local population. So this is not uh, so. It doesn't mean that guerrilla warfare is not because there are local population. Hai. Thik hai, ye thik hai ki guerrilla warfare includes uh, operations carried out by a local population. But this is not the reason that they avoid. Uh, this is not the reason that... Uh, Conventional armies avoid fighting gorilla because it always includes. So this is wrong. This is not given. Okay, D is given. They do not prefer wars of attrition. They do not give results in reasonable time. So this was also a easy, straightforward question. The example of Scythians help us understand that smaller forces are more efficient than larger enemies. No, we cannot say this. Smaller forces, which kind of forces? First of all, this is talking about asymmetrical. Here, there is no qualification. Here, the smaller forces are more efficient. This is not uh, what can be inferred. Guerrilla warfare was employed since the rise of empires. See, guerrilla warfare was employed since the rise of... Here, this is not guerrilla warfare. Uh, this is an example of asymmetrical warfare. And victory in war does not always go to... Indeed, colonial powers have contended with asymmetrical threats since the rise of empires. Whereas this option talks about guerrilla warfare was employed since the rise of empires. Because guerrilla warfare is a type of asymmetrical warfare. There is a difference. Right? Uh, this is asymmetrical warfare and out of that guerrilla warfare is one type of it. So, pe ki asymmetrical warfare has been there since the rise of empires. And here option mein hai ki guerrilla warfare was employed. So, this is actually not correct. Though this may look so, but this is not correct. Asymmetrical warfare has been effective against colonial powers since time immemorial. Asymmetrical warfare has been effective against colonial powers 
since time immemorial. Can we say that? Time immemorial. So, here we are saying colonial powers have contended with asymmetrical threats since the rise of empires. And then he has given the example of Scythians to say that this has been there from 6th century BC. So, time immemorial is where it is. Right? We cannot say that asymmetrical warfare has been effective against colonial power since time immemorial. This is question mark. This is not correct. Smaller mobile forces have troubled larger armies as far back as 6th century. Yes, this is okay. Uh, 6th century mein smaller army thi, 6th century BC mein. So they have troubled. So this is fine. Yaha pe aapko, uh, obviously, I think, uh, 2nd or 4th mein confusion hua hoga. So 2nd mein, because of this guerrilla warfare, this is wrong. Asymmetrical warfare likha hota yaha pe, to ye bhi correct hoga. So therefore, 4th is the correct answer. Question 5. I think ye, mahe, yaha pe galat mark kar diya. this is not correct, this is correct. Okay, we had discussed this, that all of the following are implied except, so ye to implied hai, that they do not prefer wars of attrition, that do not give, this is not implied. Right? They, I don't know why I marked this uh, earlier, but this fourth is the correct answer here, do not prefer engaging gorilla fighters because it always includes, this is wrong, this is wrong. Okay, so I hope the question and its uh, explanations are clear. Thank you.